for prosperity. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining me today um, for the Using Existing Materials in Classflow Desktop webinar. Um, my name is Luann Baumgartner. I am the Classflow Delivery and Communications Manager. Um, I am a former eighth grade math teacher, and I have been with Promethean for going on 10 years. It'll be 10 years in January. And um, I've enjoyed my time with Promethean very, very much. And they have been on the class flow user engagement team since since it began. And, um, and currently, as I said, the class flow delivery and communications manager. Um, we um, are very social in, in our, uh, Classflow realm. So if you would like to follow us at, at Classflow, um, or if you want to follow me personally, I'm at PooVBG if you want to follow me. Um, before we get started, let's, I want to just go over a few housekeeping things. If you've been on multiple webinars today, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, um, but I've, everyone is muted. Um, and if you could just make sure that you are muted, um, if you're connected to the audio, looks like you have a quite a few people who are still working on getting connected to the audio. I think I want to throw that number in there one more time in case they need it. Um, so that's in the chat. Um, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> all right, so our housekeeping. Oh, we will be recording all of the webinars um, for the day, and we have a total of 36 webinars that we are delivering, so quite a few, and we are going to be um, sending the recording to all sessions out to anybody who registered. So if you only registered for this one session, you will get the recordings to all sessions, which is really nice. Um, if you attend the webinar, um, we're going to be sending out a certificate of attendance worth one hour for each session that you attend. Um, so, you know, that's really, um, I think it's really great as well. Oh, uh, let's see, what am I missing? A bunch of stuff. You would think I'd have this down pat after so many webinars, right? Not so much. All right. I'm looking at my cheat sheet for my for my stuff. Um, if you have any questions, could you please post them in the chat or the Q&A? Um, I may not be able to get to those questions before we uh, end our session today, but we are definitely saving them and looking at them so we can try to get them answered. We also plan on doing a Camp Class Flow um, FAQ webinar. So if we look through the questions, those who questions that are kind of stand out to us the most, um, you know, are, are asked a lot, we're going to make sure that we um, do a webinar so we can try to answer those questions for everybody. Um, I think that's about it. Um, if you have had other sessions today, if you've had run into, we've had a lot of technical difficulties with WebEx. Um, and so if you have had to deal with multiple inv invitations and not being able to get in, we sincerely apologize about that. Um, that kind of happened very last minute for us all and, and we were scrambling trying to make sure everyone could, could still attend. So hopefully if you did have to experience that, it didn't cause you many issues and um, you are able to attend all of your sessions. And if you did miss out on one, like I said, you'll be getting the recordings for all. So. There's only, what is that, two, two to three? So we have one more session after this. So hopefully um, you won't run into that issue for your last session either. But if you do, um, just please be patient. We're trying to uh, get all those things sent out as quickly as possible. And really, you should have received an invitation already. Should it need a new uh, link? Not all of them do, only a couple of them. So if you didn't get one, don't worry. It, may, it might be that your session just didn't need one. All right, so we're going to be talking about using existing materials in Classflow Desktop. Yeah, I thought that was it there. So I'm actually going to exit out of here and uh, close that. All right, so here's Classflow Desktop. Um, this is the icon for Classflow Desktop. If you are unfamiliar with Classflow Desktop, it is our downloadable software, um, and it can be used both offline and online. It is designed to be used with Promethean hardware. So um, let me bring this back up here. So if you have a Promethean board um, and, or a panel, and it doesn't matter how new or old it might be, um, it is designed to be used with that board. If you do not have a Promethean hardware, Promethean board or something, or panel, 
Um, but your school has its own special class flow site. This program is for you as well. So I'm in this special site here called demo.classflow.com. If, if you have a special one, and you may not, it's okay if you don't, um, it, yours would say like your school district or an abbreviation of your school district.classflow.com. So you either need to have that or Promethean Board in order for Classflow Desktop to function for you. Um, otherwise, it's just a 90-day free trial. Um, and if, uh, well, I'll just, well, I'll just leave it at that. Once you log into your Classflow account, um, this is your Classflow homepage. Right here you have your classes and my resources, your Classflow homepage. Right here is where you can download Classflow Desktop. So if you click Get Classflow Desktop, I'm on a Mac, so it's automatically recognizing that for me. And I can download it for Mac, and you can um, also download it for Windows, um, should you have a Windows machine. So that's how you can get Classflow Desktop. And once it's opened, um, where did Trey go? There we go. This is the icon, um, so it's here in my, uh, system tray, or it could be on your desktop if you're on a, on a PC or if you want to put it on your Mac. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's just this tiny little wheel right here, which is really nice. So my desktop is getting messy. Sorry about that. If you click on the black area, you can move it around. Um, and if you click on this hamburger menu right here, it'll open up the wheel for you. So some of you may know this already, but there's just some basics that I thought would be helpful to go over before we got into our content. So using existing materials with Classflow Desktop, there are a couple different ways in which we could do this. Um, if I click on this browse icon here, I can um, use existing Classflow lessons if I want to. You can download those and use them in Classflow Desktop. So that's some existing material if you're familiar with and using Classflow a lot. Or I can convert files. So I could click on this, and if I click on the I, you can see I can convert flip charts, smart notebooks, and Adobe PDF files. So I, if I have any of these things and I would like to convert them into Classflow desktop lessons, I can do that, which is really nice. Um, and we're going, we'll get into all of that here in a minute. Um, I can also use these icons here, which is my desktop annotation and my instant whiteboard. So we have all of these these three different options in which I can use existing material. I don't have to reinvent the wheel because, you know, we don't have time for that. Um, but I can do that and um, use what I already have in class with desktop, which is really nice. So let's, to get started, I'm going to show you a PowerPoint. We're going to start there. And I will start my presentation, slideshow, if you will. So here's my um, my PowerPoint. Now notice my Classflow desktop um, is wheel is open on top of my PowerPoint. So I'm in PowerPoint, and I can click and go through my PowerPoint. So if you like annotation, uh, animations and all those things in your PowerPoint, and you don't want to convert it, and then that's great. Um, but by the way, you, you can only convert a PowerPoint in Classflow.com, not within Classflow Desktop. So, but anyways, I can click, kind of click through here and go through my um, PowerPoint presentation. But whenever I'm, I want to write on here an annotate over, I can click on this icon right here, which is my desktop annotation. So I can click here, and it's going to take a snapshot of that PowerPoint slide. Oh. Uh, oh, it's much to my other screen. Oh no, the girl to do. Mm, I am going to exit my uh, so that's not what I get for using two monitors. I'm trying to be slick. I'm not so slick. And I come here. We'll have to end my show, I think, for a minute. Pardon me, sorry. It's the first time it's jumped over to my second screen. It knew it was getting towards the end of Camp Classflow Day. I do believe. All right. Let's try this again. And click on, oh, let's see, not that one. Give it a minute to populate here. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm singing to myself. Let me do this. I want to jump start it a little bit. This little um, what's going on here is it's an undocumented feature, we'll call it, with Classroom Desktop that it will be fixed shortly. So no worries. And if you experience it, it's, you know, I just want you to know you're not alone. Um, I think it's a Mac thing. But now, see, my icons are showing. They, they are fixing that. We have a new release coming out on August 18th, and so we're going to see some changes in there. So, all right. Now, let's see. I'm going to bring these up. Let's see if it behaves for me. Now, yes, there we go. I had moved some things to my other screen in my previous session. It must have liked it over there. All right. So, here, what it's done is it's taking, taken a snapshot of my desktop screen. So everything is showing, you know, even this. And I can use my pen tool to uh, write different things. Um, I can move this out of the way. I can collapse this too and move this over here. And I can, um, you know, draw lines or whatever I need to do. That's not right, but you know what I mean. I'm just putting them over here. These are not matches whatsoever. They're just showing different expressions and equations. Um, but bear with me, we'll pretend like they are showing matches. And that is not, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because I am not drawing very well. All right, we'll pretend. There we go. Now, again, just bear with me. We'll pretend like these are matching. And I know they're not, but we're all teachers, right? So we can use our imagination. So I could write on here. I could add a shape. Um, maybe adding a shape would have been a little bit better. And I could have, if, if it was a matching thing, <laughs> and I could have done some things there. Um, I do have an eraser tool where I could erase if I if I wanted to. I can actually click this and make it thicker. Um, so very similar to Active Inspire in that you can erase annotations um, and you have a thickness that you can use in, in those types of things. I can also add text. Um, welcome. Whoops, can I type inside there? Welcome to this session and move it to wherever I'd like it to be. Come here. There we go. All right. So, and I can change the text color because obviously that is absolutely awful. Very, whoops, not very good best practices there. So I can click inside of here and I can edit that. But for now, I'm just going to let it go. Um, when I have finished doing whatever I need to do, I open my wheel back up. So I'm, I'm hoping my screen isn't too busy for you. So this right here is my, let me move it here so you can maybe see. This is my desktop annotation icon. When I click on it a second time, it closes out my desktop or minimizes my Classload desktop annotation. I'm now back in PowerPoint, so I can continue to flip through my PowerPoint and go through the pages. When I find another page I would like to add to my Classload desktop lesson, I can click this desktop annotation icon again here, and again, it'll take a snapshot and add it into my lesson, um, and I can add different um, tools in here, which I you know we would not use a protractor for this, but just so I can show you that we can add some math tools um, as well as other things. If I click on my pen tool and I was to write, let me move this here. Oh, what could I write? Um, I want to put CFD for Classload Desktop. Oh, nice. Whoops. My comp park director is getting my way there. All right, so then I can hit this text selector and I can select my text and it will take that text and turn it into, um, excuse me, take the annotation and turn it into text. So if you're coming from Active Inspire and you use handwriting recognition, that's basically what this is. It does work a little bit differently in that it's not something we turn on, um, it's an after the fact. So after we write, um, then we can select it, which, by the way, was an, another way that you could use it in Active Inspire. Um, but I could then type my text or type my stuff, click and drag and take it. And notice it did pretty well with my pretty bad handwriting, but again, I am writing with a mouse. So. so what's nice, what's going on here is it's building a lesson, it's, but it's actually building a lesson within my instant whiteboard. So I'm going to close out of here or minimize my toggle off my desktop annotation. And I'm going to exit my slideshow. Maybe. There we go. 
and all right, great. So this icon here is my instant whiteboard icon. If you have sat through any sessions today on Classflow or um, just have used it, you may notice that this is the same looking icon in Classflow. When you want to go to the instant whiteboard, I had already mentioned we are All right, that's what we always say, CFD makes life a little easier for us, sounds right, class with desktop out all the time. Um, again, I can add shapes, um, I can change the color of these shapes, uh, let's see, I can put orange, I can even make it a dotted line if I wanted to, so we definitely have some options here, um, but then the instant whiteboard and um, desktop annotation. This icon right here is your toggle carousel. Well, what does that mean? If I click on this, it opens up my carousel. Similar to Active Inspire, it's just like your page browser. And so this is your page browser, but we call it in Classflow, in Classflow Desktop our carousel. And it has the cards. So what I'm doing is I started building a, a new lesson using my existing material. So if I was in a desktop annotation mode, I can now start to build a lesson and th these things will still, I can still manipulate these, I can move them and they stay. Again, if you're coming from um, Active Inspire, the desktop annotation is almost like that clear transparency sheet over top of your desktop. And as you wrote, it stuck on that clear sheet and you it didn't stick with your material. So we've obviously tried to improve upon that quite a bit within Classical Desktop. and this. I think this is great. I get really excited about this because now we've taken a snapshot of it and everything we've added stays within within that uh, snapshot. So we can kind of end up building a lesson. So you can see here, I can click, I can delete cards if I want, or I can even add additional blank cards if I want to as well. So it's really nice. And you can even um, move them around a bit um, if you wanted to. So right there. Oh. So. If I'm done here, I can um, exit out of my carousel and I can keep going. Again, like flash flow, or excuse me, why desktop annotation and instant whiteboards are kind of the same thing where if I click, it'll toggle me out of there. So even um, if I had a, sorry, I got a lot of things open here, so I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to find it. Here we go. Here's a PDF that I had. Maybe um, maybe we use this, this PDF a, a lot in class and I can um, use my desktop annotation, take a snapshot of that, and then I could use this in here and say, okay, now listen, I want to make sure everyone writes their name. Um, I know even teaching eighth grade, I had an awful time with students writing their name in, always trying to figure out who did what. And I could even um, use my highlighter. So here's a highlighter. You can tell it's a little thicker, kind of looks like a marker, and you can change the thickness. I can even make it draw a straight line, which is great for someone like me who cannot draw straight lines very well. Um, and I can start highlighting different things here. And again, if I go to that carousel, it's still building that lesson. Here are the cards that I, had, I have added already. I don't want to delete that. I don't want that one in there. And you know, again, you can just keep going and going. If I get out, um, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be just my desktop. Oh, right there, my desktop. If I click it, now I'm in my desktop. And I can, oh, I'm still on straight line. Um, and I can continue to write and do whatever I need to do. All right, so, um, and again, I have tools where I could add different tools here. And then I could toggle out of it. Once you go, I'm gonna go back in here. Once you are finished with your um, top of desktop, and again, here are my cards down here, building my lesson. Um, if you want to save this, you can click on the cog and I can save as a lesson. If you exit without saving, all work is lost. So you want, definitely want to make sure that you save it before you exit if you want to keep it. Or um, 
I can just, um, you know, again, I can save it. Um, one more thing I did want to show you, I almost forgot, is um, let's open this one back up. Um, just to show you that you can use it over a website. Um, I think you kind of get the gist, but. All right. So let's say if I was here and I wanted to add some things here within a lesson. Now notice this is stuff that I would maybe already use. It's not that I am creating anything new. I don't have to really spend a lot of time. I can open this up right inside during my lesson. I can click on my desktop annotation. I can take a picture and then um, I can do what I want to do with it. So again, just kind of reiterating, um, it's just, we really, really tried to make this as easy to use as possible. Um, and quite frankly, I think we're, we're pretty excited about it. I think it's, I think it's pretty neat um, the way they, they built this desktop annotation. So I want to save this. I will say save as, and then you can put it wherever you want. Um, I put it on my desktop. Um, I already did this earlier today. I'll save new lesson two. Save us some time, and I could click save. And now, when I go to, um, I could, oh, I could still exit. By the way, and I could continue to add cards to this too. Maybe I save as I go a couple times. Um, but I've already saved it, so I'm going to exit and close. And um, oh, if I go to this browse here, it will list my most recently opened lesson. So here it is. So I could click here, and I could open it. And now, when I open it now, um, it's going to open up uh, within my Classroom desktop, within my lesson builder, which is a little different than what we were just in. But it has created the lesson, and now I could use it. I could add additional content to this. I could um, tweak it a little bit more. I now have access to here my teacher my my teacher track. So I have teacher cards and student cards. So if you wanted to, um, if, if you connect, like right now I'm offline with Classo Desktop, um, and you can tell I'm offline because I have a gray circle around here. Um, but you could take that uh, desktop annotation or instant whiteboard lesson once you save it and open it in Lesson Builder to kind of keep going and building on that. So let's say if I, let's say if I get connected, I can send content to student devices, I can poll students and do all those things. So. Let's say I want, um, well, let me explain this real quick. Teacher cards and student cards. Teacher cards are your front of class display. So whatever, if you have a Promethean board, panel, smart board, um, Mimeo, Foxlight, whatever it might be, whatever kind of front of class display that you have, this is the card that's going to be showing when you play your lesson. Student cards, you need to be connected online for student cards and connected to a, less, uh, a session, a class session, but then I can send that content to student devices. So that's where Classroom Desktop um, using it online can come in uh, very useful. But let's say if I wanted this same card to go to my students, uh, I can duplicate it. And then if I want this to be both a teacher card and a student card, I can just click and drag it and add it right there. You can only um, drag student cards in a diagonal fashion. It has to be from here up. I can never bring it from here to here because you need to have a student, uh, excuse me, you need to have a teacher card in order to have a student card. And if I try to drag it over, then it's like trying to get rid of the teacher card. So class close says, no way, not gonna happen. Um, and I can hit the plus plan. I could add other blank, uh, uh, with, on a blank card, I could then add uh, student cards. And I could even click here um, and click that insert right there. And even add additional resources should I want to do that. Um, all right, I see one there I want to add. This is for our Pearl Harbor lesson, but I'll take it for now. Doesn't have to do much with equations, but, um, but just to show you that we can add it, and I can add text, all those things. Um, another thing within class flow that we have are activities. So um, I'm going to. I'm going to come back to this lesson, actually. I'm going to hit save. When you hit save, I like to point out, when you hit save, it's always going to save it, not give you, it won't give you a save as option. 
Um, so it's going to just save over top. If I made some changes, which even moving this would can be considered a change, and I go to exit, then I'll get that save as option. So that's just a little tip um, for you. And I'm just going to, or I could exit without saving, which is what I'm going to do. If I click on Classo Desktop here, and I go to my uh, browse, and I hit Create New, Obviously, I can create a new lesson, or I can also create a new activity. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get into creating an activity uh, for this session um, because we're talking about using what you already have. But I just want you to know that activities are available in Classical Desktop because once I take this lesson that I'm building right now through my desktop annotation, I can add an activity to that lesson. Um, so that's that's really nice. Or even if I was to convert a flip chart or a PDF or uh, something, I could add an activity to that lesson as well. Um, if someone asked me this question earlier today, so I'll just kind of throw it out there. If we didn't have a session on creating an activity in Classflow Desktop, because it's really exactly the same in Classflow as it is in Classflow Desktop. The only difference is right here and how do you get to that. If you wanted to create a new lesson, that's a little different than, or a new activity is different than what it would be in Classflow, right? So I would click this, uh, my, that browse icon, create new, and then hit create new activity. After that, all everything is the same um, as it is in Classflow. So don't want to get into all that, but I just wanted to show you because I wanted to add an activity to he in here, and I didn't want you to think, well, what the heck's an activity? I don't know what activity is. All right. So I do see some questions coming through. I'm not ignoring you. I will get to them in just a moment. Um, I'm going to add a card. I can add a card. I'm going to add another card, which I've already watched me do. But um, just to show you if I want to add an activity, I can hit insert. I already have an activity created here. And I'm going to click open. And it's going to add that activity to my lesson card. So now let's see if I want to play my lesson, I can play it through the front of classroom. Um, you see here I have my card showing here, which is very similar to um, your page browser in Active Inspire. If I click through them, you can see I even have my student and teach cards right now. These student cards aren't doing me a lot of good because I'm offline, um, but we can connect, which I will show you here in just a moment, um, show you how we can connect. And here's the activity. And I could play this activity. Again, this could be front of classroom. If we are connected, we can send this to students as well. Now, one thing I wanted to point out over here, this is presentation mode. <coughs> Excuse me. This is presentation um, mode in Classical Desktop as it stands today. And you only you do only get these these tools here, a pen tool, the select tool, and you turn the pages. When the new version comes out, August 18th, you will have the same tools as Instant Whiteboard. So just to show you, if I go to my Instant Whiteboard, this is what Presenter will look like come August 18th. So we understand those tools are not really sufficient to run a lesson properly, so we have changed that. Um, but obviously, you know, we wanted to get some tools out there, and so um, we added these in the interim until we could get the other ones ready. So then we have this, and then they could do the activity, and I can't find any answers quickly. Oh, I'm losing my touch. I used to go find these really quick. Oh, here's Rally. There we go. I can do that. Perfect. All right. So just to show you again that you can send these to students. So let me get it here, and I'm even going to exit my older at the moment. And yeah, I will save it this time because I want to up. Yep. I want to come back to that. So let me show you how to connect. So using those existing materials, um, oh, I just realized I forgot to show you how to convert a lesson. Let me show you how to convert a lesson, uh, something real quick, and then we'll get into how to connect. So if I click here and I want to convert a file to lesson, and again, flip chart, smart notebook, PDF, I'm going to convert file to lesson, and I'm going to choose a flip chart, because I am partial to flip chart. And the, there's the Pearl Harbor one. I think that one, since I added an image from that earlier. Hit open, 
and it's going to go through the motions and convert it. Now, the larger the file is, the longer it might take to convert. Um, if you are converting from uh, Active Inspire, some things will convert over and some things will not. It depends on whether or not those features are um, supported in class or desktop. So if you are if you use a lot of restrictors like the movements of things, those do not convert into class or desktop because we don't have those. But if you use a hidden action or bring to front action or uh, how to link to something, then those things will work. Now links sometimes work and sometimes don't. It depends on how they were added. So. Just a little disclaimer there. Um, all right, so one thing I, I'd love to point out down here are the uh, the page notes from Active Inspire. I've been using Active Inspire for many, many years, um, and I was huge into the page notes. So I'm super excited that they are coming over as what we call card notes in class of desktop. So we have all of our card notes here, um, and so they all convert over. You can hide them by this little arrow or bring them up. You can even add additional notes if you wanted to. So I'm just going to hit play just to kind of go through and show you how it's over. Notice I did not touch this. This is exactly how it came from uh, the flip chart to um, Oslo desktop. So I think it came over really nice. So right here, um, I will say, like, it looks like the images, there's an image here that got flipped, so I would maybe want to do a little tweak and, and go in and send this shape to the back. No big deal. No big deal. Go through these. And um, how to find the right card. Let me just scroll through here and we find it. There it is. Oh, passed it. Just to show you, um, so here is a sound file. Um, and those also, they come over. Yesterday, December 7th, 1931. I did stop. Um, so that's really nice, too. I will say um, the conversion doesn't do well with grouped objects. So you ha if you have things that are grouped, you would want to ungroup them. Um, it's just th the grouped objects come over. But if there's a should rephrase, if there's an action or a, a link attached to the grouped object, that's where it gets a little little funky. So um, grouped objects are, are fine, they're great. Um, actions or links attached to groups, uh, grouped objects, that's what um, doesn't convert well. But, but anyway, so then you can see you have this. And I could, again, I could add card and um, that's enough love today, and add whatever I want if I wanted to go back and add an image or something, I can do that. Or that, um, that uh, activity, gosh, I lost my train of thought there. Oh, where's my Pearl Harbor image? Here's my map, put the map in. And there we go. All right, so just to kind of show you some of those things. All right, so now if I go to exit, now, if I go to exit, um, it will ask me to save or save as. Now, if I just hit save, it will save it wherever it grabs the flip chart. So, you know, what does that mean? Let me show you. If I go here, where's my finder? I'll go there on my other page. Oops. If I go here, I grab that, um, oh, wait, it was out this one. I grab the uh, Pearl Harbor flip chart from this folder, so that's where it saved that lesson. So just, just so you know, it's always good to know where things are going. All right, so let me show you how to connect. So if you want to, this is where it gets good, right? So um, I click on my hamburger menu, open this up, go to the hog, and then from here I can log into my ClassFlow account. Now, if you see this in three months, your activation will expire. Again, if you have your private class flow URL or if you're on a Promethean board, you can ignore that. It, it'll just keep recycling. Um, you do need, if you're on a Promethean board, you have to plug in the computer every 90 days um, in order for it to reactivate. But I'm guessing you're probably connected all the time anyway. So if I log in. All right, so now you can see I've logged in because of this orange circle. So you can tell some things with the color changes. Once I've logged into class of 
the class flow. I now have that. Uh, I had a session started. I was afraid I can do that. So I'm going to end that. I'll come back to that. So, but the orange means that you are connected. You, you logged into class flow. And now you'll notice I now have this icon here, which will take me right into my class flow account. So I could get right to all my class flow online stuff right through here if I wanted to. A lot of schools like to use that. Um, kind of use Classflow Desktop as a one-stop shop for both Classflow Online and Classflow Desktop because they could just get through Classflow through here. All right. Um, now, if I, I'm on, I'm connected, but I don't have a session started, meaning I haven't started a class yet. That's key. I could be logged into Classflow all day long. I cannot send any content or pull my students until I have started a session. So, um, I click, oh, I have class open somewhere. Where do I have it open? Uh, in my other tab, <laughs> uh, I need to log out here. Pardon me. In the mid All right. Pickle. All right. Now, um, my well, class flow is not open. All right. Well, class flow. We'll restart it. And this isn't. Um, I could, if my students just connected, it would it would be fine. I but I want to show you the steps. That's why I'm I'm closing that out. There we go. So there it is. This icon should be showing. So if I click on it, now it will show all of my classes I have for my account, including the ad hoc session. Um, or again, if, if again, that through my sessions, you've heard this a few times, but um, these are classes that were created within Classflow, uh, or an ad hoc session is something that's more on the fly. The difference. The main difference between them all, and it's a big difference, is that um, any uh, data associated with the ad hoc class will not be saved. If you do polling, if you do uh, what lessons you delivered, if you did an assessment, all of those things will be saved under the classes tab in Classflow for these classes. If you do ad hoc, none of that stuff is saved. I'm, we use ad hoc for training purposes because it's just easy, so I want to click on that. So once I start a class session, and find the correct tab. Oh, that's what I want. Sorry, we want, oh, there it is, okay. And um, this, this, is, this is the student side here. I just want you to see um, what students see. Again, this is um, an ad, what we call the ad hoc session. If they have their own student accounts, what they see is completely different, and they just log into their account. But um, this is not, this is a ad hoc session. All right, so that's what the student sees. Now, I'll bring this up here. Hopefully, it's not too busy for you. Um, this green means I've started a session. Now I can send content. I can pull my students, and I can send content. This window here is your class code. It always stays open, and you can move it, though, as you can see, so that's nice. Um, if I quickly want to get it from one side to the next, I can click that button, or I can just click inside of here, and I can move it around. So it's always showing. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. Now let's go back to my class flow here. So if I go back to the lesson that I was just starting, my lesson two, this was my desktop annotation session where I was taking some snapshots and I play I can actually go to my wheel here and I can send content right here I can click send I can say also current card with the screen I can send a screenshot of the window I'm going to say send current card if I go to my student side, you can see it's getting that Classflow card. So you can send content to students through Classflow Desktop. You just need to be connected online. 
um, which I think is, makes sense. I'm going to exit out of here because I don't want you to think that I have to be in a lesson like that. I could, from right here, I have nothing open. I'm on my desktop. I mean, I could go to my website here and go back to Newzella. And I can send content to my students. And I just would take a screenshot or do a window, um, whichever, whichever you prefer. I'm just going to do a screenshot for ease of use at the moment. And just to bring it over here, you can see my students have not, has, they've now gotten that screenshot um, that I've just sent to them. I'm going to move this out of the way. So you do have those options also, um, which is really great. I mean, this doesn't take much, I suppose, but I get really excited about these things. And then we can scroll down and, and look at them. I can also pull my students, again, using things I already have. Maybe this is a website that I use a lot with my students, or this could be a PDF that we talked about with a PowerPoint, anything. Um, I can pull my students also. So these are the different poll options. They are the same within Classflow, Classflow Desktop. Um, I can now, you want to hit Select Image to tell it, okay, what do I want it to go? Notice it says from current card is grayed out. It's because I don't have a lesson open. I don't have an instant whiteboard lesson open, desktop invitation, or any lesson. But I can still pull my students. Um, I don't have to have a lesson open. I can still pull my students. And I could say, you know, take, uh, again, I'll just do this one for um, ease of use. And I'm going to say I want to do a creative poll because they're my favorite. Bring my students back over here so you can see. They're getting the card now. So here's what I just sent as a creative poll. They have these options here where they could uh, circle things themselves. They were a little bit better with the mouse than I am. They could add shape. Um, you know, just all those different types of things um, that they can do. Back to my select tool. That's a very similar active inspire also. And once they have added everything they want to add, they could even use the camera tool to take a picture. Um, they could upload an image. They can even take pictures of themselves. Um, I just don't have it set up like that right now for my computer. But if they were on like an iPad or tablet or something where they're mobile, they could really walk around and take pictures. Uh, let's see. Let's look at different picture. How are you using the same one? I'll pick that one. That's fine. Open. And it can add that picture then into here. So just some different options. And then I hit submit. As the student, I hit submit. Go back to my teacher, and I need to bring this back over here. So now this guy here that had my code, and I'm going to do this just to unclutter my desktop. Now, now that I started a poll, you'll notice I have additional options where I can stop the poll, pause the poll, and look at my poll results. So if I click here, I can see my poll results that have come in, and there they are there. And I can toggle it to turn it off, and I can stop my poll. So it's similar to Classflow, but it is a little bit different than Classflow. So that's how you can do things with uh, with your students online. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, looking at my notes here, make sure I haven't missed anything. I don't think that I have. Um, if you do have any last minute questions, please feel free to throw them into the chat or the Q and A, um, and I will at least be able to uh, collect those. And, and try to get answers back to you as soon as we can. So I hope that your next session and the connection to your next session goes extremely well. Oh, I just realized I didn't do my next step, which you probably have heard a million times today. But just in case you haven't, um, so what we, you know, what the next steps are. There we go. Hit play. And there we go. All right, so if you have not signed up for your Classflow account yet, please you can do that there at classflow.com. Um, we will be sending you a follow-up email within seven business days with a link to the Camp Classflow playlist. And again, as I mentioned before, this will include all sections throughout the day. So you can try to get the most out of um, our day and so we can try to help you the best we can. Um, you will get a one-hour certificate of attendance for each session that you attended. Um, also, if you want to register for other webinars we have coming up, we do about three or four a month. You can do so at classflow.com slash events. And always encourage everyone to get social. So the hashtag for Classflow is hashtag campclassflow17. If you would like to tweet about it, we love to hear from everyone. Um, and say how wonderful your day was. And um, you can tweet it at Classflow or like us on Facebook. 
If you have any questions or want need some help while you're using Classflow Desktop, if you click on the cog within the wheel, it'll open up the menu and you have options for help right there. Um, let me, I'm gonna actually exit out of here because, again, I like to show it to you where it's not cluttered. So if I click on my wheel, click on the cog, go to help, here I can go to help videos or to our help website. So just so you know where to find help should you need it while you're using Classflow Desktop. So I think that's it. Please enjoy your remainder of your afternoon and hopefully you're joining us for one last session. And if you've been with us all day, um, I hope you've gotten a lot out of the day. This is the first time we've done it. So uh, again, please excuse our technical hiccups that we had. Um, We'll definitely learn from our mistakes and see what we can figure out and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much.